And now for the Monero development segment. I'm nasally, but I like it. <laughs> it's different. <laughs> Look at him. And then he's saying, I'm picky. Look at that. <laughs> Hi. What's up, man? How's it going? How y'all doing? Good, good. How are you? I'm doing, I'm doing much better. Good, good. Yeah, yeah you, you were, were sick, sick. Last, last week. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. That's yeah. so bad. How are you feeling You're right now? I feel pretty, I feel better. I'm still taking it easy. I don't know what it was. It was, it was just maybe, I'm, I've been trying to exercise more and then I think I just caught something at work and then I didn't rest and it just got caught up with me. Aw. You, you gotta rest, wow, man. you gotta rest. It's, it's yeah, you guys say that y'all do like 30 different things. I know, I know. <laughs> I gotta rest. <laughs> but, uh, you know, we, we, we Thank crashed Thank you, too. help, help. Hopefully, hopefully we don't crash before the conference. But, you know, I probably will. Oh, he just crash. keeps going. I'm like dying. He's yeah. like, catch up. I'm like, are you kidding me? Yeah, let's not get it. We that. recharged in Puerto Rico though last week. Yeah, we yeah. Had, we no, it a, did. Well, it oh, it's not, that wasn't a relaxing No, because he wants to do though. a show every time. Well, no, it's not relaxing because we're with your family. Yeah, but it was nice. Like, yeah, it wasn't relaxing, but it was fun. You don't, you don't really relaxing. go to Puerto Rico to relax. No, I don't. You go to Puerto Rico. Yeah, have an amazing time. time. You have an amazing time, but it's not. You don't come back. You know, Puerto rested. Ricans. But. Uh, <laughs> yeah, man. Hey, keep resting up. Thanks, thanks for doing this anyway. Appreciate it. No, of course. Thing is, it's a pleasure. So what do what do we got? What do we got this week? Um. So we have. I think Rucknium has been covering the impact of mortals. I think for the past. Pretty much, I think since they went live, I think he's been covering them because in the in the past videos, as you mentioned, um, Mon or more knows Monero NFTs are only harmful at like certain levels. So, um, Rockingham has recently put out a great Reddit post about all their research they've been doing. I believe at least over the past month. I think it goes back a little bit further than that, also. So we're just going to cover the impact of that and pretty much overview um, Rockingham's report. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, I saw his Reddit post. It was it was it was really cool. I mean, it um yeah. the the data he used to explain things was 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 really interesting and then just he just kind of for me kind of explained things in a way where it hasn't really been explained yet to me in that in that fashion where I kind of understand oh, yeah. the impact a little bit better in terms of how abnormals are affecting the decoy selection essentially. Yeah, and I would say um is they're a great like educator, also like great developer, great statistician is amazing. All the beautiful graphs, all it's it's just like a a plus, a plus yeah, work. He, he is awesome, <laughs> man. He is awesome. I think he came. I think he was originally from like the Bcash community, and then he found an interest in Monero a few years ago. Or I don't, I don't want to misquote or misstate, but I'm pretty sure that's kind of like what the history of Rockneyam was. And he's been, he's been uh, pretty mm -hmm. involved for a couple of years now, and he. He has yet to uh, publicly come out, but he will be, which, you know, not not encouraging him to do so. I, I like that he's mm -hmm. he's, hi he's lurking and, and hiding. Um, <laughs> but, uh, he will be presenting at Monerotopia remotely. He's going to uh, voice disguise and do Oh, okay. Or I think... Oh, I didn't realize that. Okay, cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. He's, You've yeah, he's been not, talking to him. I have. Yeah, he's not revealing himself. Um, cool. he's going to do, I think, text to speech for his, for and, wow. then, and then he'll be doing Q and A as well with text to speech. So very cool. And he's oh, gonna, he's gonna be a fast typer. <laughs> I know. <laughs> he's got to be like. <laughs> okay. I don't know how he's gonna do it, but you That's know, pretty cool. He's he's a pretty impressive dude, so I'm sure we'll blow it up. Would you do an interview, Doug, with someone who was doing like a Monero talk interview with someone who was who was um doing like voice to text or like something yeah, like sure. that? Of course. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I was just curious. I, I, I don't remember in your backlog. We have so many. I don't. Oh, I have, watch I. It have, oh have we? No. Uh, well, no, just we had we had somebody on that was completely disguiser. was completely blind. Remember? And, and oh. oh, I mean, this is kind of a different. Right. And he, yeah, he was. Uh, Right? Remember, I forget that? that that was. Yeah, no, you're right. You're right. No, I think it was. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty cool. He was cool. I mean, we've obviously had people come on anonymously yeah, and disguising their voice and whatnot. I don't think we've had somebody doing a text no. to speech. Just that Maybe. I person, think but I think Whatever. But yeah, totally open to it, obviously. Anybody that was a Monerotopia episode. He was yeah, on was live. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know. Ah, okay. Um, yeah. Take it yeah, away. Yeah. Uh, get into the mortals we can talk about this show the, the monero talk show later i have a little bit at the end of, end of the slide about monero talk big fan but um so yeah i have this slide here how bad are mortals 
unfortunately for the people at home that are listening and not watching, there's going to be a bunch of um, slides courtesy of Rucknium, but you won't be able to see them. I'll try to explain them. But if you can, it'd be probably much better for you if you were to, able to watch this. But basically, the presentation today is going to be how bad or more knows. And for anyone who, like, unless you've been underneath the rock for the past, like, two months, you know what more knows are. For anyone that, you know, late to the game. Omorno is a Monero NFT, essentially. So we're going to see how bad they are for Monero's privacy right now. And all of this stuff I'm talking about right now comes, I literally copy and pasted it. So I got to cite my sources from Rucknion, like we said, they're going to be the Monerotopia and they do great work. I have a couple of Twitter threads about them. They're, they're amazing. So this, all my information comes from them. You can go to Monero right now, Monero Reddit. I believe the post is still like in the top five posts right now. So if you search this title, it'll show up. It's an amazing post, but let, let's get into it. So basically um, this whole um, paper or presentation talks about black marble. You might ask yourself, what is a black marble? Well, first to understand what a black marble is, you have to understand how Monero provides privacy. And one of the ways Monero pro provides privacy is when you send a transaction, it actually hides the um, outputs of that transaction by including different other output or inputs, sorry, inputs of the transaction. So it mixes your coins with other coins. On this graph here, I think there's only like a couple, but right now it mixes it with other 15. So when you send a transaction, it, it goes to the blockchain and randomly picks, or not randomly, there's a specific method that it picks other inputs to, to tie into your transaction. But as you can see, if let's say, for example, if you were to pick 16 inputs or 15 inputs that were bad, right, you would basically get no protection. So there's this relationship with outputs or inputs, things like that. So what is a black marble? You can see here a black marble in, in this one is a transaction input that is bad in the transaction. And for example, there are many different things that could be a black marble. But for right now, all you need to understand is that a black marble is a bad input chosen, essentially. Any questions so far? Am I going too fast? No, no, no. no. Good stuff. Good stuff. And then, so like you said, um, right now, in the, the ring size, of fit, you take 16 inputs into the ring size, but you actually have an effective ring size. So, for example, let's say you were to get three more nodes in your inputs, you would have an effective ring size of 13 instead of the original 16. And a smaller effective ring size is bad, obviously, right? Because, I mean, you can imagine a worst, worst case scenario where you get really extremely unlucky and you pick 15 more, more nodes, you basically have no input privacy because the more nodes are, are all public, so they're known inputs. So they're not giving you any an anonymity sets, essentially. But the thing is about this is that this isn't an issue that affects just Monero NFTs. Coinbase outputs could be an example of black marbles. They're known, they're very unlikely to be the real spins. So it, it hurts your privacy a lot. And ring selection is random. So you can't really control this, right? Let's say you were to go to your Monero GUI, send a transaction. You Most users don't have the skill to really pick their outputs. So you can just get really unlucky. How unlucky, you might ask? We have some great, slides from Rucknium. And this is a slide that talks about how many black balls exist over time. And a black ball, again, is just a bad input. So you can see a yellow line here. So actually, before more nodes existed, which is the black line down here, you can see the yellow line is just Coinbase outputs. So in the past, before more nodes were a big issue, the biggest threat to your privacy in, in this specific way was actually Coinbase outputs because they were very unlikely to be spent. And then the way Monero decentralized mining works, there are a ton of them. Well, not a ton, but there are more than something like on Bitcoin. And they're very more, much more frequent also. So you can see this graph here. And in the first line is when more nodes come into existence. The we should say too that uh, that orange line, right? Where the Coinbase black balls plummeted on March, oh, yeah. March 15th, because there was a new implementation with PT pool, right? Yep. Uh, I guess redu I, don't, I don't really understand exactly what was implemented that reduced the effect of the black balls coming from Coinbase. Maybe maybe you understand, but uh, apparently I, I, something that reduced the effect. 
Yeah, I believe they just condensed them and issue Coinbase outputs less often. I'm not sure though. Right. So like you might you might for example you might have a Coinbase output much more frequently and they just reduce that. And that hopefully reduced the amount of Coinbase outputs in general. So you, you got bigger payouts less often, essentially. Right. I think is what they did. It was kind of interesting that that happened. You know, so they kind of solved the Coinbase black ball thing right before <laughs> Edmar Cardinals. And then two days later, Ed Cardinals. <laughs> That's how life goes, though. Sometimes, you know, you solve one thing, there's, there's always yeah. something popping up. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, like, <laughs> you know, you're doing a great job. But yeah, I think the moral of the story here for me overall when I, when I read mm -hmm. Rock Games Post is you see how, the you know, privacy is a constant battle. We always say it. Yeah. And now you could actually see that statistically, right? Like that. Oh, yes. Here, here we are losing the battle for a little bit and then boom, kind of a breakthrough. Uh, a new <laughs> implementation and we've gotten rid of these black balls. All right. Then there's Immortals and boom, you can see a drop off there as well. Right. So, yep. Um, I think that's kind of the, the, the biggest takeaway for kind of noobs who are wondering what this all means is that we're going to constantly face these issues. And the uh, most compelling part of all this is that the Monero development community is constantly actively trying to uh, thwart them and effectively doing so. But go ahead, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so like Doug said this slide beautifully. Um, over time, you see the different things battling for, I guess, being the, the worst black ball. You had Coinbase. Then you had Mornos come and take over. Then Mornos went down because no one really used them as much. Then you had, so I love Coinbase down here. But as Doug said, right, we've gotten much better. If you go back to the left side, that's where we were there. But now we're down here around the 10%. So much better. But... Once again, in order to understand how your privacy is hurt, you have to understand that you, you take inputs into your transaction, which high which output you're spending. And then if you get one of these bad black balls, that can actually reduce your ring size, essentially. So, but on average, you might ask, how much is my privacy hurt? So on the on the left of this graph here by Reckoning, you can see at the top, you have 16. Monero's default ring size is 16. So that's, a, that's a, I believe, the minimum you can get. So everyone had 16 here. Monos didn't exist. So you can see on the, on the left, you have the effective ring size if you only consider Monos, for example. So if you go to the black line here, sorry, like I said, it's going to be very graph heavy for the people listening, but I'm trying my best to <laughs> um, translate the graph for you guys. But over time, you can see how different things affect the ring size. So if you start out Monos where it didn't exist, so they had no effect on the ring size. So you actually got the full privacy of the 16 outputs. And you can see down here, coin, um, the Coinbase outputs. And if you go to the far right here, you can see actually more nodes went went away. So the Coinbase um, effect or the more no output effect on your privacy has decreased. So you're almost back up to 16, but not exactly. And the biggest threat right now is going to be just the Coinbase outputs. But once again, the Coinbase outputs are much better than when they started. So I want to be clear about that. Just a overview about the history and this is the worst worst case scenario so on the last slide was the average and the worst case scenario right now is going to be i think it's a five percent um, deviation so the worst case right now is going to be um still coinbase again and, and the worst case scenario you can get is probably going to be somewhere around 12 so you're still pretty private right 16 12 out of 16 is not like the worst thing in the world, but we're still working to improve it. Like Doug right, said. we're still above the previous ring size. Yeah, 11. we're still above previous ring size. So this, all of this, like Doug said, the summary for people at home looking for is a, a quick TLDR. Monero is constantly growing and constantly improving its privacy features. And and yes, we did have drama around more nodes, but we are still in a better place than when we started a couple of months ago. Actually, so the privacy of Monero has actually increased based upon these statistics. Awesome, man. Yeah, and, and a quick, how do we fix this permanently, right? there? I think um, as Doug has shown via his various interviews, there is no, like, correct fix, you know, just a less wrong one. And Ruckneo finished off his post with some options. Option A would be to exclude more nodes from Bitcoin selection. But a lot of people are upset with that option because it sort of condones more nodes, you know? It sort of brings them into the protocol and accepts them and then, like, oh, we're going to think about you in the protocol, how we design our protocol. And a lot of people don't like that idea. And yeah, then, right, yeah, I think yeah. also says that that becomes kind of a cat and mouse game too, where yeah. then it, you could exclude it in one way, but then it can, uh, you know, reappear in another way where the exclusion, mm -hmm. where it gets around the exclusion, right? 
Yeah, then you have another option is like prevent the transform mornals, which leads back to other issues. And you can also alter TX extra rules. And the one that I think everyone agrees with, right? Right. The, the most ones just increase the ring size, right? Because I think Surface is throwing around ring size. I think between one hundred twenty eight and two hundred fifty six, if I'm if I'm not mistaken. But so right, we, we're talking about twelve and sixteen. Two hundred fifty six is so much bigger, and that would be such a much better improvement. But once again, referencing the Doug's talks, um, Doug recently, I believe, like was that two weeks ago, had a great talk with JT, JT Grassy, Br- and and also um, Luke was there also, I mm-hmm. believe. Yes, Luke, and it was an amazing talk about the nuances towards the end. So once again, the experts are having opinions on these. Y'all should just go listen to them. It's a great video. I don't try to summarize it, but it covers the moral issue, I think, in very nuanced and great ways. And also, there are weekly dev meetings if you want to follow this issue more closely. And so, some weeks they talk about TX Extra. They have time. Sometimes they don't get around to it, but the notes are always there. So you can always go and listen to the devs talk about it in more detail. All right, buddy. Good stuff. Good stuff. Yeah. For anybody, yeah. you know, noobs listening, I feel like people listen to this and then they're like, oh my God, Monero's broken. You know, this is no. this, this has been something that's been known <laughs> since, you know, the, the existence of Monero that ring signatures are the weak component. Mm-hmm. But I think people need to realize too, ring signatures are but one component of Monero too, right? Like this is just obfuscating the, you know, who this who the signer is of the transaction. Mm-hmm. Uh, confidential transactions, you know, that there's 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 no issue there stealth addresses there's no issue there at ring signatures effectively there is no issue when you statistically look at it it's yep. just not, it's not ideal right and because mm-hmm. privacy is a constant battle we want to improve it and but we want to do it in a way where we don't overnight uh create an unusable currency right where it becomes transaction fees become too high the transactions become too heavy right we could go to a, a ring size of a thousand tomorrow but the the blockchain yeah. was way too large, too fast, right? It wouldn't, it wouldn't, it wouldn't yeah, it, you know, wouldn't be practical. So we have we have to wait for other efficiencies to come in before we can raise the ring size, and then mm-hmm. hopefully eventually swap it out uh, with uh, full proofs. Which you know, I think we, we've spoken about that quite a bit on this show. Um, but it just needs to be done in a responsible manner, and I'm sure that's going to be a, a big discussion at Monerotopia as well. Yeah, definitely. I also been thinking about this thing. I don't know. Doing research, I know Fyro has this thing where they don't do full membership proof, they still have pretty large anonymity sets. So I don't know if it's like full, full proof, you know. Like, I don't know. Like, question do you need 300,000 um out decoys to have a good transaction? I don't know. That's still in talks, though. But I'm just thinking about that, those type of things. Yeah, I mean, they use Lelantis, yeah. which is basically, mm-hmm. Ser- you know, a version of Seraphis, is w- which is what Monero is going to be uh, implementing. I think that's what you're referring to. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just don't know if it is, like, Fire currently doesn't have full membership proof. So I, don't, I don't know if you need no. them to have great privacy. Is a no, question. You probably just, need bigger, yeah. Yeah, the Lelantis, Spar- they just have a much larger ring size. They don't have... Yeah, basically, the, yeah, basically, yeah. yeah. Yeah, which is what we'll so, get with Seraphis as well. Oh yeah, I'm excited. Um, and yeah, Co-, Co will be down there. I freak, do are you coming to Monerotopia? You yes. Yes. All right. Awesome. <laughs> I got my um I know there's a bunch of fiasco with the passport. So mine came early actually. I don't know what's going on. I just I just got lucky. But yeah, yeah there was another one too that was like waiting and he, yeah, four weeks, which was nice. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People yeah, oh, fingers crossed, people are actually getting their passports, which is pretty crazy. Which is fantastic. But yeah, we, we're hoping to have uh, a panel. You know, we'll talk about kind of the future development <laughs> of Monero, and you know, we'll, we're going to have Co down there. He's going to give his own talk, but we want to put him on that panel. Co is obviously he's developing Seraphis. We just spoke about Luke Parker. Luke is you know genius whiz kid uh, that's that's building Spry, <laughs> but also understands Monero tech really well and is a Monero dev. So we'd have him on that panel. Uh, maybe we get Justin Ernhofer on there. Just kind of talk about the the future of of monero and like this idea of developing uh you know full proofs into monero how practically how that might come about and when we could expect to see that so that should be cool oh i'm so excited <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be good man it's gonna be good it's with, be with the mar- fresh margarita in your hand that you purchased yes. with monero i mean it's it's you know it's you gonna can't be beat it you can't beat it <laughs> so go rest up man go rest up because we're, uh, we're gonna need you. i just say the thing, same thing to y'all <laughs> <I tell you. laughs> see you all right see Cheers. you thank you so much <laughs> appreciate it